all is quiet on the northern front. Normally, on a weekday afternoon, the Nürburgring Nordschleife would be crowded with prototypes being tested or the exotica of a high-end track day. Instead, we arrived to find it completely deserted, with the only car authorized to use the 12.9-mile-long track being the almost painfully green Mercedes-AMG GTR that is currently sitting silent in the short pit lane. Mercedes must have written a sizable check for exclusive access, the famous circuit book to give us a taste of its 577 horsepower range topper S capabilities. The GTR is in its spiritual, if not corporeal, home. We might be 191 miles from Mam Guest Base in Affalterbach, but every part of this car has been designed to perform here, especially against the clock. The R is wearing a bright metallic shade of paint that puts us in mind of a streaking frog, officially known as Green Ho Magno. This is a reference to Jackie Stewart's famous description of what the Nürburgring was back in its driver slang heyday, we hope he's getting a licensing fee, and evidence of the obsession with the place that grips the auto industry. The ring is the thing. As cars have gotten faster, it has become harder to distinguish them through raw performance statistics. Straight line metrics such as acceleration and even top speed numbers are losing their relevance in a world where top sports cars routinely hit 60 miles per hour in 3 seconds and many can do 200 miles per hour hence the importance placed on setting lap times of the Nord's life. This place is a historical anomaly, a circuit designed to show off the monstrous speed of pre-war Grand Prix cars and long since adjudged too dangerous for more powerful motorsport categories. Nothing faster than GT3 cars competes here these days, and the Nordschleife's main function is as a dynamic playground for chassis engineers and, through the tourist driving sessions when anyone can have a lap in return for 29 euros, to keep YouTube stock with crash videos. But it has also become the place where everybody wants to set the fastest time. It has not quite true that the bullshit stops when the stopwatch starts manufacturers send cars here with unlikely performance options, driven by fearless specialists. Yet a Nord's lifetime has become a widely accepted benchmark of relative performance. The fastest road car time remains that set by the Porsche 918 back in 2013, but everything from SUVs to front drive hatchbacks vie to be quickest in their segment. The rest even a panel van record, the 9 minute, 57 second lap turn by a modified Volkswagen transporter. When it looked as if time setting would be banned last year, there was an uproar. Enter the GTS. Records aren't going to be set today, but with Mercedes GT3 driver and ring specialist Thomas Jager driving, there is a chance to experience what a fast lap feels like ahead of when the GTR sets its own time in the next couple of weeks. We also have Frank Amart, the development boss of the GT, on hand to talk us around the car. He introduces its movable aerodynamic elements, its upgraded engine, and the rear steering system that can electrically steer the rear wheels by up to 1.5 degrees. Read more in our previous depth dive story. The GTR is anticipated to go between 20 and 25 seconds quicker than the current GTS, but MR no s and attribute the difference to any one thing. It has the combination comma he says. The aero brings more downforce and more confidence, the suspension works better, and the rear steering improves cornering and stability at speed dog. Nice and wheezy. We've long suspected that passenger rides like these are collective revenge by automotive PR reps on the entire genus of journalists. The Nordschleife is a particularly vicious track to experience without the steering wheel in front of you, its roller coaster like combination of corners and crests making even the most iron stomach feel queasy. The GTR SV8 fires into life with a bass heavy idle, loud even through the insulation of a helmet. We rumble onto the track, and Jager takes the first corner easily and then does some weaving to make sure that everything is behaving as intended. Evidently reassured, and with tires and brakes still cold, he drops the hammer. First impressions are of the sheer force of the GTRS acceleration and how angry it sounds. 
second impressions, arriving seconds later, are of the severity of the G-forces generated under braking and how even the heavily bolstered sport seat suddenly feels short on lateral support in the corners. Third impressions. Maybe lunch wasn't such a great idea. Apologies if you read looking for an in-depth critique of how the GTR deals with the Nord's life on a corner-by-corner -corner basis. It ain't going to happen, notes were not being taken, and indeed, eyes weren't always open. While various video games give a good idea of the shape of the track and the order the turns come in, they give no preparation for just how three-dimensional it feels or how close the barriers get in the faster sections. The real challenge for a car traveling as quickly as the GTR comes in the parts of the circuit where high-speed bumps cause it either to rise on its suspension or even to lose contact with the ground. The most famous of these, Flansgarten, creates the brief but stomach-lurching impression of the AMG catching air, landing just in time to squeak around the next right-hander. We only get two laps, but a stopwatch provides the opportunity to see how hard Jager is pushing. Starting at the bridge on the long Dottinger Hole straight, rather than the official lap start, means a full speed run, with the display reading 7.46 as we pass it for the second time. Almost 20 seconds slower than our ride in another GTR, with Jager admitting he was some way off record setting pace, and a fair chunk of ballast in the passenger seat, it has not hard to see 20 or even 25 seconds coming off that number. For reference, Porsche claims a time of 7.20 for the 911 GT3 RS, perhaps the most obvious rival. Returning to the pits gives a chance to debrief Jager about the car. Interestingly, he reckons that the most aggressive damper setting, Sport Plus, is too firm for the Nordschleife S bumps, but is full of praise for the adjustable traction control system. With the stability control switched off, it has nine settings, with one being the most cautious design for use on wet surfaces and nine the most lenient. Jaeger is adamant that trusting the system makes for faster laps than turning it fully off. If I was trying to set the best possible time, I would go to 7 or maybe 8, but not off. It allows you to be more aggressive with the throttle without worrying what the car is going to do. Dot. He also calls out the rear steering system for praise. It turns the rear wheels in the opposite direction to the fronts at low speeds, but above 62 miles per hour they turn in sync with the fronts. During testing, we were able to switch it on and off, and you realize what a difference it makes, comma Jager says. In the faster corners, the car is much more stable. I expected it to make a difference in slow corners, but I was really surprised how much more confidence it gives when you are going fast. Thought. Next time we report on the GTR, we'll be able to tell you what it feels like from the driver's seat, for s seat.